So the question we're going to ask today is what is the psychological or evolutionary origin of religious belief? Now that's not a challenge to religious belief if you're religious, um, but rather an exploration of the core idea. Where does our need for religious meaning come from? Now, the specifics of religious belief throughout history have been contradictory, which of course means that most of them have been wrong. So, why is it that so many uh, people throughout human history, throughout human evolution, are religious? It doesn't quite make sense that they would spend so much time uh, devoting uh, energy and resources to something that's false, right? Um, be that tree worship, or animistic worship, or worship of the sun, or whatever. Think of yourself as a hunter-gatherer. You're spending your days going around, hunting game, hunting wildlife, hunting uh, small animals, collecting berries. It's very hard work. Why would you also spend a lot of time moving large stones around to worship the sun? What would the purpose be. Now, for the individual, it makes sense. They believe that it's true, um, and they are trying to appease their god or gods. But why would evolution design us in such a way that we are religious in the first place? We'll examine two explanations. Explanation one, that evolution has built us to be religious in order to aid group survival. And explanation two, that evolution has built us to be religious by accident, that it is, in fact, a byproduct of the way our brains work. Explanation one is pretty simple, really. It binds the group together, and the group that's more bound together is more likely to win at evolution compared to the group that isn't bound together. The sociologist Emile Durkheim argues, uh, or argued that uh, groups are uh, happier uh, and uh, suicide rates are reduced when there is a strong religious element. E.O. Wilson, uh, the sociobiologist, who's someone who studies society and biology combined, argues that one of the core things that a group needs in order to be bound together is a, is a, is a central belief system. And religion has formed that central belief system for a long time. So that's explanation one. Another explanation comes from uh, Reza Aslan, who argues that it's not really the group function uh, that's the thing. It's rather that our brains uh, are naturally designed to want to be religious. He says it's, um, it's, it's the accidental result of two phenomena. One is the theory of mind, the idea that we have a consciousness and are aware of that consciousness. Um, and so it makes sense to say that other things are conscious too. Other humans, but also other animals, plants. Um, think of a child playing with its toys. For that child, those toys are real, right? The other element he thinks that's important is our instinct to see faces. We weren't always the excellent predators we are today. Um, we used to be prey, um, and the way that you survive as prey is you spot when something's about to eat you. Um, and those who saw faces even when there weren't any were more likely to survive than those who didn't see faces when there were faces. So add those together, says Reza Aslan, and we have an interesting conclusion. If we think often that other things have a mind, and we're all, we often see faces where there aren't faces, we could combine those together pretty quickly to believe that in some way nature uh, was alive and had a soul just like ours. So be it group evolutionary advantage, or as a side effect of the way that our brains operate, it seems that our religious belief systems are baked in. But that's just the biological side. I suppose the next question we should ask is what happens when culture gets involved?